Well, hello, Lionhearts. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion. How are you guys today? This is not our daily vlog. This is just a little something extra that I wanted to do because it has a story behind it. So here's the story. There is a restaurant that has been around for, well, I think 100 years at this point, actually, called The Spot. It's had different names, but it all originated about 100 years ago as just a chuck wagon. Now, when I was... Uh, <laughs> Just getting my Screen Actors Guild card, I had just become a member of the union. I got a phone call from um, Central Casting asking if I could come in and work on a television show called Parks and Recreation as Chris Pratt's stand in. And I said, Yes, I was a huge fan of Parks and Recreation and especially, well, actually, everybody on the show. I just love that show. And so, I agreed to do it. Well, when I got there, they said, actually, we have a little bit of bad news. The scene that we were going to use you for, they actually cut that scene, and Chris's scenes are so minimal in here, we probably won't need you, so you can either um, just get paid and go home, or if you'd like to be used as an extra to be in this episode, we can find a place for you. And I had realized once I got there that what they were doing was this was the episode that we were saying goodbye to Ann and Chris and Chris was played by Rob Lowe, so this was actually his send-off, and what they were doing was they were throwing a big party. Uh, Leslie was throwing a party that included every holiday of the year so that Anne, her best friend in the show, could um, celebrate all these holidays with Leslie one last time. Now, when I was there, they positioned me by Rob Lowe, and I know that Rob Lowe is from this area. He's actually from the Dayton area, so as I'm standing there, and if you want to know when this happened and if you've seen the episode, there's a part where they show Chris dancing. They show Rob Lowe dancing to like an old 90s song, and I forget which one they ended up using because they tried three or four different songs, and he tried about six different dances. I'll never forget when he did, he would just one after another was great. He would do like the running man, and he would do all these things, and then finally he said, do you guys want me to do the worm? And they're like, can you do the worm? And he just dropped on the ground and he started flopping around doing the worm and he, it was good. So you could tell this guy was a really nice guy. He, uh, he actually on the set seemed a lot like his character. And so he looks over and he sees on my forearm right here that I had a Cincinnati Reds tattoo. And he said, are you a Reds fan? And I said, yeah, I'm from the area. And he said, I am too. I'm a Reds fan. I'm from the area too. Where are you from? And I said, I'm from Troy. And he said, I know exactly where Troy is. He said, what are you, right off exit 65 or 66, whatever that is? And I go, wow, you're really close. No, but really, really close. So he said, have you ever been to the spot? And I said, no, I've heard about it most of my life. And he said, yeah, my grandpa used to own the spot. I used to go there a lot as a kid. He goes, you should try it out next time you're in town. So yesterday I mentioned to my grandpa, we were going to go out to eat. And uh, I said, hey, why don't we go to the spot? And he said, you know, I went there a few months ago and I didn't really think it was all that great. And I said, okay, well, let's go somewhere else then. So we went somewhere else and then we went to my mom's house and I brought that up to my mom and she said, really, you didn't like it? Because I went there a few months ago and I thought it was great. And my mom is extremely picky. She may not know this, but she is extremely picky when it comes to things. And if she doesn't like something, she will not hesitate you to tell you that she does not like it. So it was like a 50-50. Papa didn't, didn't care for it and my mom did. So then I went over to a friend of mine's house at night uh, named Tim and Tim's girlfriend is from Sydney where this place is located and they go to Sydney a lot to visit her family. So I asked him, I said, what's your opinion on the spot? And he said, man, I love it. He said, I think it's better than Kay's. I said, really? He said, oh yeah. Then his girlfriend chimes in and says, I've just never really seen what people like about it. I don't think it's all that special. So there we had it broken two and two. And so I decided, you know what? My grandpa paid for lunch yesterday against my wishes, but he said, well, you get the next one. So I said, you know what? When he, when I saw him today, I said, we're going to the spa today. I'm paying because I want to be the tiebreaker for this thing. So we're going to go and uh, see where Rob Lowe's grandfather ran his restaurant. We're going to try it out. It's now under different ownership, but we've got to see it just the same. We'll see how the food is. So we're going to go see the Sydney famous, The Spot. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. I see a black figure. Who is that? Hi. What's going on, Ja? Good morning.
Well, we've made it, and as we pulled into our parking spot, they still have all the old car hops right here that you park in between. I love it already. Welcome to Sydney, Ohio, my friends. It's a pretty cool looking bank building. This started as a chuck wagon on this location in 1907 by a man named Spot Miller. That's where they got the name The Spot. Now what ended up happening was the city told him, you cannot operate a, uh, a chuck wagon on wheels here. And which is kind of funny to think about now because now there's like food trucks all over the world. And uh, so what he decided to do is he took the wheels off, put some sides on this thing, made it a little bit bigger, and next thing you know, we had what was the original spot. Now, in the 1940s, the spot, unfortunately, the original one burned down. But um, he ended up retiring in 1913, selling it to a couple of guys that changed the name to the Cook Spot, which is what you can see here on the side. And then July 1st of 1950, Rob Lowe's grandfather bought this place and ran it and he was the one that um, was the first one to implement catering into the, uh, the restaurant. So now we're going to try out this world famous establishment and uh, see if it's, you know, see if it's all that Rob Lowe told me it was. Let's go. And one of the things this place is known for is being a hot spot for the presidents to stop. Reagan stopped here, Bush stopped here, and you can see that George W. Bush stopped here. It said he became the third sitting U.S. president to visit Sydney when he arrived at the spot on August 28, 2004 while campaigning for re-election. The president greeted shock spot patrons and ordered a hamburger and piece of pie. After posing for photos, he continued his campaign tour of West Central Ohio. Now let's go check out the spot. Wow, it's packed. Must be good. Rob Lowe's grandfather, who owned this, was named Robert Helper. He's kind of a local celebrity here, even though he's no longer alive. And they said that uh, it wasn't uncommon to see Rob and Chad Lowe hanging around here in Sydney growing up. So you basically order your food right up here, and then they serve it to you right there, and then you just pick your own seat. Look, they even have an old jukebox in here. My grandpa said, I think it's a quarter now, but he said it used to be a nickel. Now, at one point, the spot was actually a chain, but this is uh, this is the only one left now. Here, you've got photos from the 70s, and they said that they've remodeled the inside here like 25 times, literally, since 1940. There's the uh, Bell Fountain spot. This is the spot in the 1940s, and kind of a weird place to put this photo. But there's Chad Lowe along with Grandpa, Robert Helper right there, there's Chad Lowe, and then there's Rob Lowe right there. And there's Cincinnati Reds broadcaster when he still had his hair, Marty Brenneman. Seriously, the spot, what is up with, like, putting this photo of all photos right here, like, it makes no sense. <laughs> Here they're calling it the best, one of the best burgers in Ohio. Right here over my grandpa's shoulder are the uh, pictures of George W. Bush when he was here that we were reading about on the plaque. Taking pictures with uh, all the patrons. How about that? Here's our menu. Your basic burgers, and there's an Ohio State burger. I wonder what that's all about. And then here are some newspaper clippings from when uh, George Bush stopped here. Oh, and apparently they're really well known for their pie here. And there's the chili. And then here on this one you can see that they uh, they named a burger after George W. Bush. It's a hamburger with lettuce, tomato, and onion. And there he is ordering his food right exactly where we are. Big bite with fried cheeseburger. Look at him placing his order. He was a character, I'll give him that. They win me over already when they got red cream. Brock's Red Cream on tap. Believe it or not, just as we were finished ordering our food, a uh, booth opened up, so we got luck lucked out. Popular place. Alrighty, we got it. Double cheeseburger, 
and I even got myself a uh, piece of lemon pie. We'll see if this is better than the last time my grandpa was here. Let's dig in. Well, I'm taking the rest of this pie home. I am full. And the verdict on the spot, for me anyway, is uh, I loved it. I thought it was incredible. I do think it's probably better than Kay's is now, and I think my grandpa really enjoyed it too. But I'm sorry, I said that uh, Rob Lowe's grandfather's name was Robert Helper. It's actually Robert Hepler. I was reading it off of a newspaper and my eyes are going bad. Sorry guys. So I just noticed that this picture of Robert Hepler, Chad Lowe, and Rob Lowe was taken right over there. It's changed a little bit, but you can tell because of how the windows break. So, there it is. You can see it right up here where the window disconnection is. Well, that was amazing. I loved it. I thought it was, I thought it was everything that Rob Lowe said it was gonna be. And it was kind of funny, I, I found a little blurb inside that said, when, uh, when Rob Lowe's grandpa, Robert Hepler, owned this place, you could see the kids in here running around all the time, and they said that Robert used to encourage Rob and Chad to play pranks on the employees. So, if you're from Sydney and you were growing up in the 70s and you ate here, you probably saw those knuckleheads in here pulling pranks on people. Now we're out of here. I'm gonna show you guys the, the old car hop stations in the parking lot, and then we'll call it a day. See, even though they don't use them anymore, they never removed them, and so that's where you park. I just thought that was the best. You're, uh, you're lucky if you get these kind of places that exist. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed seeing a little bit of a uh, little something extra today. Thank Rob Lowe for this one. Have a great night, everyone. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.